guys are right on time. Hello. I am just sitting here making a new weather recording chart because we need a new one because we ran out of space. So today is June 3rd and what do you think? What would you say? What are our conditions today? Is it sunny? Is it raining? Is it cloudy? I'm going to write cloudy and sunny because it's a little bit of both. And I think we're going to start our weather chart now at 50 degrees because I think it's going to probably be that or warmer. Probably a lot warmer than that for the rest of our time together. I mean, we'll see how long we do this, but certainly for the foreseeable future, it's going to be pretty warm. We're going to go all the way to 100 this time on our chart. Let's see, where were we last time? Last time we started our chart below freezing down here at 30 degrees, and we went up to about 85. So today we're going to get started. We're going to go ahead over to our thermometer. Walk, 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 walk. You might listen to the podcast Wow in the World will recognize that. Let's see, it is 80, mm, 86, we're going to call it. I'm going to call it 86 degrees. And hi to Lynn. And hi to everybody else whose names I don't see, but I can tell you're watching. All right, so we're going to mark today's temperature, June 3rd, as 86 degrees. And I'm going to put our little dot for today and write 80. Six. And we already said it's partly cloudy and partly sunny. All right, so welcome back to the farm. And we are doing a rotation of um, topics that we're, that we're learning about together. So um, we, we're in our second rotation for, the <clears throat> for this season. And so we talked about seeds and we talked about worms. And this week we are talking about everybody's favorite topic, chickens. So um, some of the chickens are already roaming around the yard and some of the chickens are in the chicken house. So let's go and say hello to them. And then we're gonna go on the farm and make them a salad. So let's see. Um, some of the chickens have been acting kind of naughty. So this chicken right here, she's dying to get out. Tonks, she has been going into the farm and digging up all kinds of things and causing a lot of trouble. Tonks, do you wanna say hello to everybody? And here's Hermione. She's the one you might remember. She likes to attack our dog. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna leave them. I think actually, let's see. I think there was one other chicken inside of the coop. So let's open the door and see if we can find her. Up, oh, I see her tail. Do you see her tail and her fluffy butt? Hi, Professor McGonagall. How are you today? What do you have there? Oh, I see what happened. This is very interesting. So one of the chickens laid an egg and it got cracked. You can see all the goo over here. And guess what Professor McGonagall is doing? She is eating that broken up egg. Let's see if we can see. Nothing goes to waste on the farm. Professor McGonagall is making quick work of that egg. And now this one's covered in yolk and gross. We'll have to rinse it off when we bring it inside. Blech. Yuck. Blech. All right, well, that is really yucky. <laughs> but it's good that um, even though it got broken, Professor McGonagall is making use of it. So we're going to, um, I started walking to the farm, but then I remembered that I need to get my salad bowl because we are going to go and make those chickens a salad to feed them today. So, um, it's getting hot again, like we said, and a lot of our plants that were in for the spring when we first got started with these meetings, like eight weeks ago, are not really very happy about the heat. So, um, the good news, again, nothing goes to waste on the farm, 
is that the things that aren't so great for us to eat anymore, the chickens like to eat. So I'm going to show you a few things like that and also a few things that um, I feed to the chickens in their salad because um, they get eaten by, by bugs and things. So this is a radish. This is a, called a daikon radish. It's a very long white radish and you can see it down here at the base. Um, it looks like I got disconnected for a minute. Sorry. Um, you can see on this plant, it's already making seed pods. So that's going to make radish seeds that we can grow again later. But for today, we're going to concentrate. I'm going to try not to move too much so that we don't lose the connection. If you look at these cabbages, originally they've been getting attacked by little tiny slugs. So what I like to do every once in a while is I'll come in and I'll take some of these leaves from the outside and use them to make a salad for the chickens. So let's get a couple of these outer leaves that are really munchy crunchy, but let's go back this way. The connection. This is another bed where some things are not so happy anymore about the heat. So we'll grab a few other things that maybe the chickens will like. This is some kale that's going to flower, so we'll take some of those. This is starting to look like a yummy salad. I would definitely eat it. Would you guys eat this salad? Let's see. Oh, here's some more seeds. This is a kale, and you can see their seed pods are a little bit differently shaped. They're a little bit longer. Maybe in a couple weeks we can come out and open some of these up and um, check out their seeds together. We're going to go ahead and get a few of these little leaves off this kale plant. Just going to kind of rip them off, throw them in there. We'll make some, put some flowers in this salad and see if the girls like that. All right. Not a very big salad, but I can give them some more later when you guys aren't, aren't hanging around waiting for interesting things to see. And you came here today to see the chickens, not to see the plants. So we're going to go back through the gate. It's really important that we always close these gates because otherwise the chickens will come right in and um, make themselves at home. So I'm going to stop here for a second. And this is a container that I sometimes fill up for them to have some extra water. So I'm going to do that too. So this is, you can see the water's coming out of our rain barrel. that's attached to our downspouts from the roof of the shed. And it's almost empty. We're really hoping it's going to rain around here again soon. But there's enough, enough water to get the chicken bowl filled up. So I'm just going to put it in the salad bowl to carry it over here. <laughs> and let's see if we can get those chickens to pay some attention to us. Oh, it looks like they might have found another watering container. Let's see. Cora was out earlier playing around with them and her friend. So it's possible that they're not going to be so interested in this water right now. But we can watch them drink a little bit. Let's see if they'll come back and get a drink. Because it's interesting to watch how they do that. Is that good, Tonks? All right, let's see if anybody wants some salad. Hey, Luna, you want some salad? You want some salad? Oh, oh, okay, sure. Go ahead, take it. She just grabbed it right from me. Tonks, you want some salad too? Nope, she's happy with the water for now. <laughs> Poor his dad says he likes munchy, crunchy salad. Let's see. Ginny came over for some for some treats too, so we're gonna give them some to share. Cause uh oh, look, they're fighting over this. Silly chickens. There's plenty for everybody. <laughs> they, they, they just, they're just like kids. They want whatever the other one has. Just like brothers and sisters. All right, so I just poured out all our salad and they can go ahead and enjoy it. And I was gonna, before we read a story today, and I have a really great story to, um, to share with you guys today. But before we read the story, I was gonna tell you a little bit more about chickens and about how we got the chickens chickens like these and chickens like you might have in your backyard or might have seen in a friend's backyard. Um, so a long, long time ago, chickens didn't look like this. Um, they originated in 
the jungles of India is what scientists believe. Um, as a wild chicken, or a wild bird, I should say, called the red jungle fowl. And if you look up red jungle fowl on the internet later with your parents, or if you're an older kid watching, <laughs> you can look it up yourself, you'll see that the red jungle fowl looks a lot like a chicken, like what we're used to seeing as a chicken. They have a red wattle on the top of their head, um, or sorry, red comb on the top of their head, and a wattle under their, under their neck. So you can see that when Luna stands up, you can see, oops. Oh my goodness, that was exciting. You didn't get to see it. I don't know if you guys heard that, but a bird, a big bird flew out of the tree. It was probably a hawk and it scared everybody for a minute and it flew away. I'll keep my eyes open to see if it comes back because we don't want that hawk in our yard with our chickens. Okay, so. The red jungle fowl, if you look it up, you'll see it has the same, um, it has a comb and um, waddle like, the, like our domesticated chickens. And a long, long time ago, um, some people discovered that um, that was a good bird to, to keep around and um, reproduce to eat. And the reasons that they thought so were that this bird didn't didn't really fly so it was easy to catch and then to keep contained in a place to, to raise the birds to eat more of them to eat their um, what they reproduced and they also made eggs that were tasty and so they started to collect them and over time those birds sometimes mated with you saw you know there's birds that come into the yard here um, and there were other birds in the area as well near these red jungle fowls that had been collected. And so over time, the red jungle fowls mated with other birds and made different varieties. And the people that kept them found different qualities about them that they liked. Um, so that was a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> Um, and if you if you want to learn more about it, you can look this uh, look up some of the history. The Smithsonian has some interesting news about the history of chickens. But um, the Egyptians did some really interesting things about 2,500 years ago with domesticated chickens, as did the ancient Romans. And in both cases, those were big, big ancient civilizations that did a really good job, just like we do today, of developing technologies that could feed a lot of people and be really organized about the way that they produced and distributed things. So the ancient Egyptians, it turns out, made incubators. They made ovens out of clay and with vents, and they would burn straw and animal waste to make fires and make heat that they used to keep eggs warm so that they could incubate the eggs and make new chickens so that their hens could lay more eggs. They didn't have to sit around waiting for their eggs to hatch and doing that job. Um, and the story we're gonna read today, you're gonna meet a chicken that, that does do that job and sits on some eggs and waits for them to hatch. So that was happening. Then after the fall of the ancient Roman Empire, it broke up and um, the people of the Middle Ages, if you ever watch movies or read stories about, um, about the, the people who lived in the Middle Ages, um, they ate a lot more wild game again. They stopped having big organized farms and lived in smaller villages and they ate partridges and pheasants and things like that. While at the same time, here in the Americas, people were eating things like wild turkeys and ducks and geese. And as I was reading this, I was thinking, it would be really interesting if we moved away from the factory farms that we have today that produce lots and lots of the chicken that we eat and moved back to some more natural and wild bird eating. So I started thinking a little bit, just as a little thought experiment, just to imagine what would happen, what birds do we have a lot of that we might start eating again. So I was trying to imagine people eating pigeons and eating sparrows, which are tiny, tiny little birds. But it's an interesting thing to imagine. If we couldn't go to the grocery store to get our food, 
what could we find around our neighborhoods and towns and cities that we would eat? And we would eat a lot differently. So right now you can see these girls are, they're not interested in the salad bar. They are foraging for, for insects on the ground, the same way the red guinea fowl would have foraged in the, um, in the wild. I don't know about hummingbirds, Daniel. <laughs> I think maybe we keep those just to look at them because they're so pretty. And they're very tiny, <laughs> it would be a lot of bones. Um, but we were watching the chickens the last time do their, their hunting and their pecking, so you can watch them scratch and peck. Madame Maxime scratches, she takes a step back, she hunts around, and then she pecks. We can try to get a little closer and see if we can see what kinds of things she's finding. Or Hermione. Let's see. Hermione's still busy. Let's see. What are you looking for, Hermione? What are you finding? Finding some good stuff? So, domesticated chickens came to the United States, well, came to South America first through the Polynesians. So the chickens moved from India, across China, across um, uh, Indonesia and the Philippines and then across the Pacific Ocean until they got to South America from that direction and then from the other direction European settlers brought chickens to North America when they came and settled in North America and I think we talked a little bit um, last time we talked about chickens about our black and white chicken um, is a variety that was one of the original heritage chickens that first came to first came to this country. This is Ginny and you can see that she's really hot. You see how she has her mouth open? And she's just trying to breathe out all that hot air. She's trying to get away from me because she's one of our misbehaving chickens so I think she knows that when I get close trouble's coming or she's in trouble. But they just love to go around and hunt and peck all day long. So, um, let's see, do you guys have any questions about the chickens that you want me to answer before we read our story for today? Oh yeah, let's see if we can turn over a log or something and see if there's some bugs under it. That's a great idea, Farmer Dan. Let's see, where is, I don't know if I could pick up these stones, they're pretty big. Um, but I'm strong, right? Let's see. So here's some stones in our garden. Oh, I might have to put the phone down for a minute. Oh, here's, let's see what's under here. Can you guys see things moving around there? You can definitely see some tunnels where there were worms and maybe ants. Let's see. Luna's coming over. Here comes Luna. Let's see if she can find those tiny worms. Oop. There are a lot of tiny little bugs. And do you see these teeny tiny little worms? I'm going to get out of the way and see if if somebody comes over and finds those worms. Ginny's coming over too. Let's see if she finds them. Oh. Nice. She found a beetle hiding. Let's see what else there is. Should I get out of your way, girls? Here, I'll step back. I'll step back. Try to turn over another one. Let's see what I can do. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a lot of stuff under there. Oh my goodness. Let's see if we can look before they. Let's see. Here's a slug. Oh, she's gonna get a big worm. Big juicy worm. Oh, Jenny. There's so many things to find. Oh. Luna just got a big one. Oh! Did you get to see her get it out? She pulled it right out of its hole. Poor worm. 
Oh, she doesn't like that slug. She took one bite and she went another direction. Oh, but she ate that one. Maybe she'll go back. Oh, is your sister making noise? Can you guys hear that clucking? That's Professor McGonagall and she's back, back at the coop and she's clucking. Chickens are a, are a, um, chickens are birds that like to communicate and live together. So sometimes I thought that was a, I'm going to lay an egg cluck, but she's walking away from the coop. So I don't know what her story is. <laughs> what you doing, Professor McGonagall? She's hiding. She's hiding. And that reminds me again of the story we're going to read today. So um, for today, I'm going to actually go inside to read to you guys. We did this, it turns out, the last time we did, we went inside for story time was the last time we talked about chickens. And with the libraries being closed and my brain not working to its full capacity these days, um, I didn't really plan ahead very well for a story for today. But um, the good news is I found a great book to read to you. Um, online, so I'm going to read it to you from that. So, Miss Lee's asking, do the chickens ever lay eggs outside of the coop? And the answer is, once in a while, but usually our chickens, if they lay them outside the coop, they lay them in the run. So, they're pretty easy to find, unless they've already broken them. But um, once in a while, we'll find one outside. Um, in the story we're going to read today, you'll see, and this has been true for us too, is that when the chickens lay in some pattern that's not their usual pattern of just going into the nesting box, it's usually because they've been bothered by something. So something in their um, routine got disrupted. So um, you'll see in this story today um, something similar. So I'm going to go ahead and read this story, The Chicken Chasing Queen of Lamar County. So I'm going to press play on this and see if uh, I'm going to pause the, I'm going to let you guys hear me read the story, but we're going to try to keep up with the, with the author. So this is a book by Janice Harrington with amazing pictures by someone named Shelley Jackson. I'm the chicken chasing queen of Lamar County. Big Mama says, don't you chase those chickens. If you make those girls crazy, they won't lay eggs. You like eggs, don't you? But I don't care. As soon as I wake up, wash away the dreaming, and brush my teeth whiter than a biscuit, I always do three things. Eat my breakfast, tell stories to Big Mama, and when Big Mama isn't looking... I chase chickens. I go sneaking up on those chickens real slow, real easy, and then... And make myself still as sunlight. And those chickens hold still too. One leg raised in the air, just waiting to step off. Which must be chicken for, what's she up to this time? And then... Squawk! Get the letters. I love chasing chickens. I do, I do. Big Mama says, baby, behave yourself. Leave those chickens alone. But I'm the chicken chasing queen of Lamar County. Poor chicken. I don't want to chase just any chicken. My favorite, I want my favorite. Her feathers are shiny as a rained on roof. She has high yellow stockings and long fingered feet, and when she talks, bruh, 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 it sounds like pennies falling on a dinner plate. I call her Miss Hen, and she's plump as a Sunday purse, just waiting for me to pick her up. I never do, though. I never even get close. Miss Hen is fast as a mosquito, buzzing and quick as a flea bite. Miss Hen and I have an understanding. I do my best to catch her, and she does her best not to be caught. But just you wait and see. I am one smart chicken chaser. This reminds me of um, our Professor McGonagall, a really pretty 
pretty wine dot. This morning, I ate my breakfast and I told Big Mama stories and now I'm off after Miss Hen. Big Mama calls, girl, are you chasing those chickens? You know what I told you about that. No, ma'am, I'm not chasing chickens. Nope. This morning, I'm thinking, what will I need to catch Miss Hen? Should I take a rope? <laughs> no, Miss Hen's too fast. Should I try some cornbread? Big Mama says you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So, and I know what kind of honey Miss Hen likes. When Big Mama isn't looking, I skip around the yard, shimmy shaking cornbread from my pockets, crumbs falling like a yellow necklace. Can you see that trail of crumbs all around the yard? It's like Hansel and Gretel. Then I sneaky hide behind Big Mama's wheelbarrow and make myself small, small, small. I don't have to wait long. One by one, Mr. Rooster and the chicken ladies come stepping up. Pickety, scratch, peck. Pickety, scratch, peck. Beaks up and down and bottoms up. Chickens clucking, squabble squawking. Where is Miss Hen? Chicken feathers go in every direction. Miss Hen is gone before I even get a good look at her. Did you see her? No, she was in the corner on the last page. Big Mama says you can do anything you put your mind to, if you want it bad enough. I want Miss Hen. I stand watching those chickens, but I pretend I'm not. The chicken watch it. chickens watch me and I watch them. I think all kinds of chicken thoughts so that they won't know I'm up to something. Corn, I think. Bright, shiny knuckles of yellow corn. Eggs, eggs, eggs! Goldy brown eggs all warm, warm, warm. Cornbread, cornbread, crumb and crumble bread. Worms, slurms, squishy, swishy, mishy, ickly, ickly worms. I stand so still even my shadow gets bored and starts to walk away. Just when I'm about to grow feathers, along steps Miss Hen. I peek at her out of the corner of my eye. She peeks at me out of the corner of her eye and I keep still, still, and then, I love this picture of them peeking at each other. I frog jump after Miss Hen, brown legs kicking, arms flapping and pigtails sailing. Miss Hen goes flying, beak clacking, yellow legs scooting, quick, 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 gone. The chicken got away again. Hmm. I go and sit ba back by, on the back step and take a drink from the silver dipper. You see this dipping ladle for the water? Seems like these days, Miss Hen makes herself as hard to find as she is to catch. Where does she hide? Is she in the pool sh underneath the porch in the shade? No. Is she by the well house scratching for worms? No. Over by the fish pond pe pecking for bugs? No. Where is that hen? Then I hear her over by Big Mama's summer cook stove in the tall grass. I hear something soft and low. Pio, pio, pio. I high step, high step, and stand still. I see yellow shapes, soft yellow shapes. Molasses easy. I crouch down low. Molasses slow. I pull the grass aside. Grass looks full of bugs. And there, on a nest of brown eggs with three baby chicks already hatched, sits Miss Hen. Miss Hen looks at me steady and hard, her eyes nice bright, her beak raised like a sharp question. She hunkers down, but she doesn't move. Miss Hen is so close that my fingers tickle. I know for sure I can snatch her up. My toes start to itch, getting ready to leap. 
I could do it. I could snatch her up and run like the wind blowing. I could, I know I could. Think Miss Hen would let her do it? You think she would squawk and peck to protect her babies? But I don't. I look again at those fuzzy little chicks cuddling tight beneath her wing. Pio, 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 they sing. And I know that in Spanish, they call a baby chick a pio because of that sound it makes. Don't you worry, Miss Hen, I say. I know you're a mama now. You're doing what you need to do. I won't trouble your babies. Miss Hatton settles back in her nest. <laughs> that must be chicken fur. <laughs> that girl's not as bad as I thought. I need to work on my chicken sentence. Now every day, Miss Hen goes strutting by like the 4th of July parade with 12 chicks right behind her. Pio, 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 pio. See that singing, pio, pio, pio? These letters are all cut out of a magazine. Big Mama says you never. So Big Mama says you'd never know. I used to be a chicken chaser. It's true. I'm so good. I can't believe it's me. Every morning I throw crushed corn out for Miss Hen and her babies. I catch grasshoppers and dig worms and give them to the chicks. I even keep an eye out for chicken sneaking weasels and egg sucking snakes. I bet that old rooster thinks it's too good to be a true ooh. It thinks it's too good to be true ooh ooh. Big Mama says good things come to those who wait. So I'm waiting for Miss Hen's chicks to grow up and then I'm going to teach them to run so fast no one will ever catch them. Not even a chicken chaser like me. says Miss Hen. You'll never catch me. So I thought that was a fun story. And I really liked that um, it had an African American character in it because we are thinking a lot right now about race and um, about seeing color and seeing differences and um, honoring them in the world around us and in our communities. And so I really was excited to bring that story to you guys today. So um, uh, let's see. I'm really glad that you guys were here. And uh, I hope that you have a really great rest of your day. And that you look for more chicken books if you're interested. And you look up on the internet about chickens. And send me your chicken questions. And send me your chicken drawings if you want to make a chicken drawing. And um, I'll look forward to seeing them, and maybe we can share some next time that we get together. Okay, until next week. See you later.